good morning. Good morning to all. So we start our day two. Of, uh, yesterday, after the opening sessions, we had uh, mainly two, two substantial sessions. One was by uh, Jacob, introduction, introduction to SDG 231 and 232. So we went through uh, all the steps from the goal, goal two to the target to the indicators and the link with the other indicators and uh, the methodology and the plan of action and possible sources for uh, collecting the data. And after that, we had a important, so the step one for this process is the identification of the smallholders. And uh, Aida Khalil made, first of all, a presentation on the methodology, going through all the, the, the steps, uh, all the discussions, and why we selected uh, the, the, the approach that is being proposed by FAO, meaning that we have a, a relative threshold instead of absolute threshold. And then once this was decided, how to make it work. So uh, she made a very detailed presentation on that. And at the end, we had a, a numerical presentation with the data. So she showed the step by step how to, to compute the threshold, how to, to combine the three threshold, and then to identify the, the, the small holders. And we had a very lively sessions with a lot of questions and uh, very, very relevant questions uh, that we have uh, taken note of. And uh, after that, we decided that the, the time was not enough. So people should take the, the data and try to look at it and see if they can try to compute themselves uh, the threshold and to identify the indicators to, to, to to reproduce the example that was shown. So uh, I think that was uh, my brief summary of uh, yesterday. Uh, I don't know if some of you have been able to, to go through the exercise and to, to, to get some results. If that's the case, we can give the floor to one or two people who, has, who went through. And if they have additional questions, we can ask the questions before we start the sessions of today. The floor is uh, up to, to the participants. Anybody has tried to, to reproduce the exercise? I don't see any. Please kindly raise your hand and uh, we will give you a floor. Yeah, we have two yeah. people. I'm Tahidul Islam. Okay. I'm Tahidul Islam. Uh, I have solved the problem. Uh, the data that you have uh, that you have sent to my mail, uh, it is okay, and I I, I did it uh, I did it uh, easily. But in our uh, data, when I, uh, in our data his data, uh, I feel some problem from the data set. In that data set. We have no uh, number of labor days utilized by the small scale of procedure uh, uh, producers. We cannot find this data, but your data is okay, and we can solve it easily in Excel sheet. Okay. Okay. So you were uh, able. We, we to did it uh, first. We first we uh, for the uh, for uh, for for getting the. Uh, uh, for getting the uh, below uh, 40 uh, 40 percent uh, small scale procedure we just uh, we sort it uh, ascending in uh, ascending order and then we cumulative uh, uh, cumulative the land size uh, cumulative and then uh, um, and then uh, do the step easily it's not uh, any problem for me i oh. think uh, any of the uh, our uh, participants do it easily but in practical, in our data set, some uh, figure, some variable uh, is not present due to 
absent, we cannot find the uh, SDG 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. If we get the data available, then I think it will be easy for us to calculate SDG. SDG oh. 2.3.1. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Very good. Very good. Okay. Anybody else want to to intervene before Ida maybe? Yeah, one, one another hand raised. Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Mr. Yes. 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 I have I have I have partially completed the tasks there, but I facing some problem in the revenue uh, revenue. Uh, Revenue threshold. I think in problem revenue threshold. Revenue uh, threshold is in the problem. Can you specify the problem you had with the revenue? Yes, I, 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 I'm finding. Uh, yeah. This is revenue uh, data. Revenue data. Is I think that I could not find out the three size data. Three, two, one. Uh, and forest data, I could not find the precise forest data. That's why I could not complete the tasks. Okay, okay. Okay. If there is no more question, maybe Ida, you want to say something out of this? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not sure I understood the, you know, what was the problem that, uh, that was found in the revenues. So, I think he's saying there was no uh, data on the fishery and forestry, which is the usual problems in many countries. Okay, yes. So um, I, I think in the fictional file that I've sent, there, there were data for all the, the sectors, so crop, livestock, fishery, and forestry. But um, as it was mentioned yesterday, whenever uh, you don't have data on one particular sector, especially fishery or forestry, you can um, still compute uh, the indicator and identify smallholders by looking at uh, crop revenues and livestock revenues. So if some of the components are missing, you can, you can still produce the indicator, but it's important to flag, let's say, the components that, that are missing, for example, in the metadata of, of the indicator that you, that you compute. Okay, if there is no more questions, I think those missing exactly, you are pu putting the finger on the difficulty with this indicator. So I think we'll uh, have the opportunity to discuss more on this uh, missing data in most of the agriculture surveys and how to, to, to try to calculate the indicators. Uh, so we'll, we'll have the time to, to discuss that. And maybe tomorrow also, we can go through the, the surveys conducted by BBS and see eventually what variables could be added to this uh, survey in order to, to facilitate the computation of the indicators. So- There is another the, question, uh, yes. Roman. Okay, okay. I do. I do. Ah, ah, I have uh, another question. The task you have given us is mainly uh, find out the threshold. And I think it is be uh, yes. easy for us. And, and uh, not uh, revenue, not yeah, it's not our task. The task you have given, find out the threshold. And yes. I think it will be it will be easy for us to find out. Okay, good. Thank you, yeah. You, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, go start the sessions of today. As of yesterday, the, the, the session will be, or the presentations will be divided in two. One will be a kind of a theoretical uh, methodology presentation. And after that, just before the break, we will start the practical exercise. So we want to put more emphasis on the practical exercise where we really will see working with the data, how the process works. So I will uh, try to be brief in the presentation of the methodology. As you said, the calculation and the computations are not very complicated. Most of them are straightforward, but the difficulty lies with the manipulation of the data and uh, the, all the issues related to the data. So I will share my presentation. Uh, 
hope this works. Can you see it? Can you see my my yes. presentation? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I will uh, go briefly on this uh, methodology and steps for computing the indicators 231 and 232. And uh, the total duration is about uh, one hour, but I will try to be shorter so that we have a few time for, uh, for the questions. Faridun, please let me know if I am close to the, the time so that I can speed up a little bit. Okay. And then after that, we will go straight to the practical uh, exercises, which will be uh, introduced by Jacob and uh, uh, with the involvement of uh, Max and Audrey. So just uh, recall, these are two slides that I took from the presentation of uh, Ida uh, yesterday. We are still in the target two, three, uh, the goal two and the target 2.3 by 2030 to double the agriculture productivity and incomes of small scale food producers. Yesterday, we focused on the definition and identification of the small scale food producers. Today, we will focus more on the agriculture productivity and the income. So the indicator is 231, uh, productivity, and the indicator 232, the, the income. Now, these indicators, in the beginning, there was uh, really no internationally agreed and, uh, definition and methodology established. But now we have such a methodological document. There is a methodological document, which is, uh, I think the link is provided in the, in the agenda. And this methodology, as Ida presented yesterday, involved this, uh, the following uh, steps. First of all, to define and identify the target population, namely the small scale food producer. So all yesterday we spent the time trying to, to do that. And then after identifying the target population on that target population to compute the indicator 231 and to compute the indicator 232. That's what we are going to do today. So first of all, the indicator 231. Now, we have seen that in the target, they talk about uh, agriculture productivity, but uh, which, you know, there can be many ways of uh, measuring productivity. Uh, basically, productivity is defined as uh, uh, a volume measure of uh, output divided by a volume measure by, uh, of input. That's uh, taken from the OECD uh, manual for uh, measuring productivity published in 2001. So the productivity measures the amount of output produced by an economic uh, unit, could be country, industry, sector, farm, or other economic operators, given a set of resources and inputs. So the productivity can be measured for a single economic entity, such as uh, uh, commodity, a group of farms, and geographical scale, depending on the purpose of the inquiry. So for more uh, methodological discussion on the productivity, there is a publication by FAO uh, in the framework of the global strategy, which is indicated here. And at the end, uh, the global strategy published uh, the guidelines for measuring productivity and efficiency in agriculture. Uh, it can be accessed on the web. And the general productivity concept was adapted for the agriculture sector as uh, it follows. Agriculture productivity is a ratio of uh, output to the input. And uh, this uh, simple equation uh, indicate how this works. So it's the output divided by the inputs. Now, this is easy to say, but in practice, we'll see that it's not so easy. So the indicator 231 
monitors productivity as a volume of production per labor unit by classes of farming, pastoral, forestry, etc. And basically, the formula is the volume of production divided by labor inputs. And I think this uh, we started touching some of the difficulties that was raised uh, a few minutes ago. But first of all, let's look at the numerator. In order to standardize and aggregate different agriculture activities, the volume of production is quantified by the monetary value of the agriculture output expressed in constant PPPs. Of course, we cannot add the, the kilos of, uh, of rice to the kilos of uh, apple, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to convert all the production uh, in monetary value so that we can be able to, 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 to summarize them. Now, when we are doing this, this is the, the, the conceptual uh, discussion, but when we, are, we, we, we go to the reality, we see that the data could be coming from different sources. So when we are dealing with uh, uh, censuses or surveys, there could be two types of censuses or surveys. One is when it's a complete enumeration census. So all the holdings in the, in the population are interviewed. So that's a complete enumeration. There is, in this case, there is no sampling weight because uh, all sampling weights are equal to one. So we don't have to deal with, uh, to bother with the, the question of the, the, the sampling weight when it's a complete enumeration. The other type is when we are using uh, self-weighted design, you know, typically I think many countries are using this. So the PSUs, the primary sampling units, are selected with probability proportional to size. And then the second, at the second stage, a fixed number of units are selected. So if you combine those two, you get a constant, a constant weight. So when the weight is constant also, uh, I think the, the, the formula for computing the, the indicators can be simplified. And uh, as I said, this uh, type of design is used in many, many developing countries where you have, uh, for example, enumeration areas that are selected with uh, probability proportional to size. And within each enumeration area, you sex select a fixed number of uh, holdings, for example. Now, in that case, the formula is very simple. So if you have uh, high agriculture activities, uh, in the ideal case, including crops, livestock, fisheries, and forestry production, and, uh, and small food producers, defined, uh, as it was defined by Ida in the session of yesterday. So the SDG indicator 231 can be computed by just averaging. So you calculate the, the, the indicator for each holding you sum it and you average it. So basically the formula is as it is, as, as it's uh, shown. So the, the VIJ is the physical volume of the agriculture product. And this must be multiplied by the corresponding price, the PIJ. I, I, I forgot for a moment, moment the T, all this should be referred to the same time period, of course. So you see here that we are calculating the revenue. So you, you multiply the, the production in quantity by the corresponding price. And then the LDTJ uh, is a pro problematic one, is the number of labor days utilize, utilized by the small scale food producer J during the year T. This is also very clear and uh, it does not, uh, there is no, no complication in it. So N is the number of uh, small scale food producers. So as you see here, you just uh, compute the, 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 the ratio for each holding. You sum it 
and you you, you average it by the, the number of producers. So this case applies when you don't have to apply any weight, uh, complete enumeration or, uh, or uh, complete enumeration census or self-weighted uh, samples. Now, when we, Yeah, of course, all the values should be converted into, so all the calculations are done in a local currency, but they need to be converted into uh, PPP uh, dollars. And the information can be found in the link indicated here. It was indicated also uh, by Ida yesterday. So now when we are not in the situation of uh, complete enumeration or self-weighted uh, sample, so we need to bring in the formula, the weight, the sampling weight. We need to, to, to apply the sampling weight. And uh, one possibility of uh, applying this weight is indicated here uh, below in this formula. Uh, it's the same as uh, previously. The only difference is the introduction of the weight, the WG, J, uh, in the formula. So you see that is uh, basically the computation is very simple, but uh, as it, it is said, uh, the devil is in the details and we'll see that uh, the, the big problem will be the availability of the, the data required to, be, to do these uh, simple calculations. Now, first of all, the agriculture activities that are uh, of concern, this, this is the same as was shown yesterday when Ida was talking about the revenue. So maybe I will not spend too much time on that because we have seen that yesterday, the crops sold, the, the self-consumption, et cetera, for the livestock, the livestock uh, sold. So the live animals that are uh, sold, uh, the overproducts of the livestock, et cetera. The same also for the fishery products, the captured fish, fresh fish sold, the, the fish processed and sold, the fish for own consumption, and the captured and processed fish, and traded fish, and the processed fish sold also. The same for the forestry. Uh, all the value should be expressed in PPP. Now, so that's for the numerator. Now, when it comes to the denominator, this is the, the labor days that has been considered. So different types of labor can be, should be considered, namely all forms of paid and unpaid labor, including family labor, hired labor, temporary and permanent workers, and exchange of labors. So these three categories of labels should be considered when we are dealing with the, the, the labor days. Now, why the labor day has been selected? Because for computing the labor input, different approaches could be considered. First of all, we could just take the number of workers. Uh, but you, you can imagine that uh, this, this is really too much uh, simplification because uh, you know a worker can be working uh, six months while another one is working just one month or a few hours. So the number of workers really is, uh, is not a good, a good uh, variable to consider. The second possibility is the number of days worked. So, uh, and we'll discuss more on that. And the best one would have been the number of hours worked. So that would be much more uh, accurate to measure the, the, the labor input. However, the, the problem of data availability makes it difficult to, to measure the, the number of hours worked. So the compromise solution would have been to select the number of days worked as the input labor input. So the denominator will be the annual number of working days, uh, which 
can be computed directly or sometimes indirectly in some cases. But we'll see again what are the, the challenges with uh, these variables. Now, as it was said uh, just a few minutes ago, even this information is not widely available uh, as we'll discuss later on. So for the 231, uh, and because of the, the challenges that we'll uh, discuss in detail, uh, the problem has been so far that uh, uh, few countries has been really able to, to compute the 231 because of the, the, the challenges related to the data. So if you look at the numerator, as it was stressed in uh, both Jacob and uh, Ida's presentation, one of the difficulties is that all the variables need to be aggregated as at a holding level, so at farm level. So, you know, in most agriculture surveys, you can have different uh, types of uh, levels of uh, collecting the data. It could be plot level, it could be farm level, et cetera, et cetera. So you, all this need to be aggregated at holding level, holding level. And, uh, and all the variables ideally should be coming from a single survey. So that in one survey, you get all the variables and you are able to aggregate them for each holding. So you have a line for a holding as we have seen in the table uh, shown yesterday. So you have one line for each holding where you get all the variables of interest in order to, to compute the indicator. And for that, you need some, a kind of integrated surveys. Uh, examples could be the FAO AGRIS. I don't know if you are familiar with this, but you can maybe talk more. I think Ida will talk more about that yes, uh, tomorrow. Or the World Bank LSMS ISA, uh, which also is a, an integrated survey, or any kind of integrated survey where you have the unit is uh, holding and you collect and aggregate all the variables at the holding level. Or it could be also administrative service, uh, sources. In some advanced countries, they have a farm registry where you have for the entry is a holding and you have all the variables that are recorded in the, in the registry. To give an example of uh, the, the, the challenges related to the aggregation at the holding level, you know, in many countries, and I think Bangladesh is one of the, the countries also where crop cutting is used to estimate the production. So the production is divide, derived by uh, from the yield, which is coming from crop cutting. But this crop cutting is done at plot level with a, a sample of plots. It's not, uh, it's not for each individual farm. Uh, that you, you, you do, but you, you put the, the squares uh, two by two or five by five in a number of plots and you compute the, the, the yield at the domain level, domain level. So uh, now how do you get the production for the individual holder? That's one of the challenges. So uh, in some countries, they have the possibility of asking the farmer directly the amount of his production. And this can be reliable in some countries, it is, it is reliable. In other countries, it's not reliable and that's why the crop cutting is used. So in case uh, you have the, the possibility of asking directly the farmer his production, the problem is solved because you can record the production of the farmer for each one of the crops. In case you don't have that and you, 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 you use the crop cutting, you need to find a way of uh, deriving the farmer's production out of this crop cutting. Now, this is a open to discussion. So one possibility could be to, once you have the, the, the yield for a domain, to affect that yield, to the farmer because you know the area of the farmer. This, the area is known. What is not known is, is individual uh, yield. So you can affect 
the the yield for the domain in which the, the holding is, uh, is is to affect this to all the holdings concerned. So you will have a production by multi multiplying the, the yield by uh, the area of the holding. The other problem is has to do with the prices. And um, the ideal situation would, uh, would have been to have the price for each commodity, each crop, if possible, farm gate prices. Now, this also is a difficulty in, uh, in some countries and uh, we need to, 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 to use some, some proxies. It can be uh, rural market prices if it is available or other prices in the country. If all these are not available, there is also a FAO database, the FAO SAT, where you can look at the, the, the producer prices uh, for, uh, for each country. So these are some of the difficulties, the data difficulties that we have when we want to, to compute the indicators. And uh, the other problem has to do with uh, the, the coverage of the agriculture surveys, especially the, the agriculture production surveys. Usually they focus, many of the surveys focus on the crops. And uh, you have seen that the, you know, we are talking about the revenue of the smallholder. If you want to be really exhaustive, you should include not only the crop, but also the livestock and the fishery and the forestry. So you should cover all these activities because you can underestimate the revenue. We have seen that, for example, in the case of uh, Cap Verde, when you calculate the revenue only on the crop, you, you may end up with uh, zero revenue because if the, the raining season is not good, they don't produce anything. Or, and, uh, but if you were able to get information on the livestock, I'm sure that the revenue will certainly be positive. So they can sell some, some milk, some meat, etc., etc. All these can be additional revenues, uh, not only the crop. But uh, so that's one, one difficulty. And even if uh, some of this, uh, uh, these activities are available, for example, livestock, usually you can have only the number of livestock, but you need also the products, the production of the livestock. So you need also the, the production of the fishery and the forestry. And uh, in many cases, those are missing in the agriculture production surveys. So you can see that uh, the, the point is here that we need maybe to, to revise our agriculture production surveys and to see how, to what extent we can introduce some of these variables in order to be able to, 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 to compute the indicators easily. Now, it's not uh, that if you don't have those, you, you should not calculate the, the indicators. But you need to, to report which activities are included in the indicators, number one. The second, you need to keep consistency between the numerator and the denominator. For example, if you have only crop, you should not include in the denominator the labor days uh, allocated to the livestock or the fishery or the forestry. So it should be consistent with the numerator. If it is only crop, it should be livestock days for the crop activities. If it is crop plus livestock, you should, it should be, the denominator should be labor days for crop and livestock, etc. So uh, it's important to maintain consistency between the numerator and the denominator. And importantly, to indicate this in the metadata that uh, uh, for this country, these are the activities included in the computation because of activities we, data is missing. So these are some of the challenges and uh, I, I hope you can have some discussion on those challenges and see how we can overcome them in the case, particularly in the case of uh, Bangladesh in order to facilitate the computation of the indicators. Now I come to the denominator, which uh, 
is a, you know the labor is a difficult variable to measure uh, in agriculture surveys because of the high presence of seasonal and part-time workers because of the especially for the small farm you have a, a large number of uh, proportion of uh, family members used as workers and the long time uh, that is needed for collecting the data on the labor in the surveys. And also, you need to be very careful because this uh, variable is very sensitive to non-sampling errors. The measurement errors could lead to some inconsistencies in the, in the, in the data. So that's why at this point that we are uh, making this training, there is the discussions going on uh, within FAO to see, first of all, how we can help countries to introduce the labor variable in their agriculture surveys, uh, particularly by adopting the agris. And uh, also in parallel to see if uh, over factor productivity can be considered uh, of course, any factor productivity adopted, the formula will remain exactly the same. You just need to change the denominator into the factor that has been adopted. So the, the process of uh, identifying the small order of uh, computing the editor, indicator will be exactly the same. The only change will be that the denominator will be the, the, the factor uh, which will replace eventually the, the, the labor. But in the meantime, we are trying to help countries, particularly through the agri survey and the, the over surveys, to be able to collect also data in labor days. And we'll see that there could be some uh, indirect uh, solutions to, to, to estimating the labor days. This will be shown by uh, Max in the presentation on, uh, on Cap Verde. Okay, so this is just an example of uh, agriculture output per uh, labor day. So the number of dollars per day for a worker, uh, that's for different countries. You can see that in most, most, most of these countries are really included in the agris, in the LSMS. Uh, World Bank LSMS survey, uh, the number is not very high, as you can see, uh, you have less than 20 countries uh, that uh, we have the data on. Uh, fortunately, this year, we, with the EU, the number of reporting countries has uh, jumped. We have uh, more than 20 countries from the EU, so the, the number has, has increased substantially uh, for reporting on this indicator. So may, I don't know if I stop here, we have a short discussion or I, I go directly to the second indicator. Kamrul, what do you think? Uh, I think, you know, uh, let us discuss you know, all together. You, know, you finish the second part okay. and we discuss. Okay. Now the second is uh, more or less the same type of uh, uh, presentation because uh, the indicator 232. So the 231 is about labor productivity and the 232 is about the average income of the small scale food producers. Of course, that should be uh, disaggregated by sex and the indigenous uh, status. So the computation of the farm income of the agriculture holding adopted by FAO includes, again, uh, the four activities uh, ideally should be included. The cropping activities, the livestock activities, fishery and forestry. And, uh, you know, in the previous presentation, we are talking about the, the revenue. Here we are talking about the income. So the difference is that the, the, the we are talking about the gross income, which is computed by uh, the revenue minus the cost. Normally, we should also take into account the depreciation of the assets, but usually information on that is not available, the, the stock variation. So uh, we end up by calculating the income 
uh, with revenue minus the cost. All has to be expressed uh, again in PPP, of course. So here again is the same as uh, previously. If the data is coming from complete enumeration or uh, self-weighted sample survey, uh, no weight comes into the formula. And uh, the formula is uh, straightforward. So uh, as we have seen before, so it's uh, the revenue minus the cost for each uh, activity. And then this is averaged by the number of holdings. Uh, the, the notations are the same as previously, except the cost, which is the, the, the production cost of, of each agriculture product. So for each, if you take a rice, what is the production cost of the rice? What is the production cost of the, I don't know, the maize, etc. So, uh, and then we compute the, the, the income from each one. We sum everything and we divide by the number of producers. Now, when the weights, so when we are in a situation where we need to introduce the weight, the possible formula is the, the one shown here also. Uh, now, we come to the, what we mean by revenue, what should be included and uh, what should be considered as cost and what should be included in the cost. So if we take the crop, so we need to include in the revenues uh, with the plus, the crop which is sold, the crop for own consumption, uh, the crop used as feed, the crop used uh, which is stored, the crop used as byproducts, the crops uh, given as gift, the crop, the crop saved as a seed, the crop used for uh, paying the labor, the crop used for uh, paying rent, the crop used for paying inputs, and the crop given out in share cropping agreement, and the crop wasted. You will, rem uh, you will see that uh, some of the items are in both sides. And then on the cost side, we have the inputs paid in cash. Here is not shown, but uh, it includes also the inputs we use for the, the material like uh, tractors and things like that. So the, the, all the, the payments in cash for the input. The land which is uh, rented, so rented for, from someone, you, you take his land, you pay him back. So that's... Uh, included in the cost, the extension cost, the crop sales for the seed, the crop used for paying the labor, the crop used for paying the rent, the crop used for paying inputs, and the crop given as a share cropping agreement and the crop wasted. So that's for the, the crop. And the byproducts of the crop uh, should be also included, including the the products that are sold, the products are used uh, in kind, for in-kind payment, used for our own consumption. Here we are talking about the byproducts, so the product which has been transformed somehow, not the direct production. And on the other side, we have the crop used for the byproducts and the total value of the input purchase. And we have also the, the crop received in share cropping agreement. So that's in the revenue side. For the livestock, we have the livestock sold alive, the livestock given away as a revenue. And we have uh, for the livestock activities, the change in cash value of the stock, and we have the livestock both, the livestock additional expenditures, the crop used as a feed, and the extension cost. Maybe it's not necessary to go through all of this uh, line by line. Uh, you can see it in the in the presentation. The same should apply for the the fishery, 
uh, where we see here the, the, the different uh, items that should be included in the in the revenue and the cost the same also for the for the forestry now as we have seen again the formula in itself is simple but the problem is to get the the data for the the indicator first of all you know Beside the difficulties with the revenue, we have here the additional difficulty with the cost of production. So we need cost of production data for each one of the, the items or commodity that is included in the revenue. And uh, I think that in Bangladesh, you have a lot of, uh, you have some surveys on the cost of production. If my memory is good, last year I visited Bangladesh. But uh, so cost of production surveys uh, are very, very important for the computation of two, three, two. And uh, in uh, many countries, they don't have the data on the cost of production. And this is absolutely necessary in order to compute the two, three, two, because it's, uh, the income is a revenue minus the cost. The other difficulty is a lack of uh, detailed price uh, data for the calculation of a holding level revenue and income. So again, in order to compute all this, you need the, the, the price data, not only globally, but a detailed price data for each commodity. And uh, sometimes this information is, uh, is missing and it makes uh, the calculation Of, uh, of revenue uh, income, uh, 232 for some countries, including uh, Bangladesh here, Bangladesh for uh, 2010. So again, same question, what is the situation in Bangladesh regarding these challenges? And how can we discuss possible solutions for uh, overcoming the challenges and uh, completing the SDG 2.3.2. Uh, that's all for the, the, the presentation and uh, the floor to the participants for uh, questions or clarifications. You know, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, you know, uh, Mr. Naman. Uh, before anyone uh, from BBS and other, other agencies raise their hand, uh, let me just you know you know raise some issues for you to you know uh, respond on. <clears throat> Say for example you have you know considered labor labor and categorized into different categories, you know family labor and then higher permanent temporary exchange labor something like that. But in Bangladesh we have experienced that you know we have male labor and, and female laborer and they are not paid equally and the expectation from them are not equal. So I think you know in the, in this one. To you know, calculate this one, we have to use some sort of weight for women, women, and then final, finally okay. get one. So for Bangladesh, when we discuss, we have to keep in mind. And you, uh, for the second indicator, you indicated cost of production. Cost of production survey. There are many in Bangladesh, total thirteen or something, but these are not regular. So if in the survey we can ask the farmer about their production cost, you now which are the component they are you know, producing, and then. In the side by side, their production costs. So in that case, directly we can get the actual production cost. Otherwise, production cost varies across the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sometimes labor is cheap. Sometimes input is cheap. Something mm -hmm. like that, or sometimes it is costly. So mm -hmm. it should be inbuilt in the uh, in the survey so that there is no other you know uh, data missing or okay. underestimation of the uh, indicators. This is my you know first observation on the methodology. Yeah. And now you can you know you can expect you know questions. Our suggestions from this, but uh, I would request you know uh, manage your time. You know how much time you allocate for this discussion. It is up to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no, I think uh, uh, Farid, how much time do we do we have? Uh, Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Let's use the okay. fifteen minutes. In that case, I will request BBS. You know, one person. First, one person take the lead, uh, respond, and 
others may supplement. Okay. So, who will take the, take the lead? Mr. Kamrul or anyone? Yeah, we have a hand, Akhtar Hassan. Please, un yes, 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 Akhtar Hassan. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, and uh, Naman. Uh, yeah. And I have a uh, question, Baba. Not a question; it's a problem. It's a uh, this is this indicator is individual uh, holdings data collection, but uh, when we go for the crop cutting method individually, it is very difficult. But BBS collecting the crop cutting method and by uh, uh, along with interview method. We are following two ways. One is cutting method and the interview method. We do we go for collect the data in, uh, in, in indicator 231 uh, for interview method? It is easier able to collect in the index. Otherwise, uh, using the crop cutting uh, instrument, uh, uh, calculating the yield is very much well difficult for the sample. Okay. But the farmer's uh, uh, declaration, is it uh, reliable? 11, 11. And, uh, in the survey period, survey period need the uh, uh, crops. Otherwise, we, we can't use the crop cutting method. That's why uh, we go for the interview method. After harvesting, uh, holders uh, easily uh, uh, understand about the uh, data. Okay. In that case, I think the, the, it simplifies the, the, the issue. So it's uh... but, but Mr. Naman, you know, uh, you know, in addition to Mr. What Mr. Hassan has just said, you know, yes. this survey is in a very with a minimum set of questions, and uh, uh, these are asked to sample you know farmers. So uh, the other related information for the indicator are not there. So you, you have to plan one single survey that will incorporate all the necessary variables uh, in, in one. And again. Uh, this sampling frame will be a little bit different because this time you are incorporating fisher, you know, fishery sector, livestock, yes, livestock and also yes. the forestry. So yes. uh, I think the, the survey, Mr. Hassan is talking about it is only crop. And again, crop based only for, for some major crops and minor crops as well, not covering all uh, everything. So yeah, yeah, uh, a farmer should ask whatever the you know, crop varieties and even livestock and forestry and fisheries okay. they are you know, cultivating. So one independent survey is needed. BBS cannot support uh, with any of the existing service. That is my you know, understanding. Okay, okay, anyone else? Please? Can I can I interfere, Naman? Can I? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Jacob, go ahead. Okay, uh, on this issue, I mean, one thing which I a little bit differ from Amirul is like you know we, it's too difficult for to 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 impose to countries for to conduct surveys for each and every indicator as much as possible. It will be really good to address you know in an integrated approach. Therefore, to integrate in the existing system rather than proposing you know a new survey methodology. You know, therefore, you know, we are going to discuss tomorrow what is the existing system. So, in which in type of things that can really inc incorporate uh, to, to, to collect data that's important that's needed for. SDG 231232. I think that should be the cost effective approach. Otherwise, it will be very costly to propose, you know, a, you know, standalone survey for each and every indicator. That's one, one point I want to make. The second point which I wanted to make is on the crop cutting thing. We need to, to be very consistent in that thing. You know, uh, I, in my opinion, the, which method are you using to report the volume of production. You, know, you, you, you report volume of production, you know, total production in this, in this year in Bangladesh in for rice, whatever, whatever. So is it based on the crop cutting um, result or is it from the farmer's declaration uh, data collected? Therefore, we need to be very consistent. Therefore, if the volume of production that are, you are reporting is based on the farmer's declaration, we can still use the farmer's declaration for computing uh, this indicator. If the volume of production is being used based on the crop cutting, then it, it might be too difficult to, 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 to use two different approaches in the same country in terms of you know, computing the volume of the, the, uh, the production. Therefore, it depends. Therefore, if the volume of production you are reporting is based on the farmer's declaration, we can consistently use that one for this, for this uh, 231, 232 as well. These are the two points which I wanted to make. Thank you. Can, can I step in as well, Naman? Yes, is that Arbab? Yes. 
Okay, so you were silent. Go ahead, please. So actually, I have two points to make. First yeah. one is related to this concept of revenue that you just explained, right? So mm -hmm. the revenue and the cost of production. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's obvious uh, from the presentation that uh, from revenue here, we mean value of production or value of output or output value. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, 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 this concept of revenue gives the impression that we are partially taking into account the production uh, which is which is sold in the market and 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 the piece which is not sold in the market which is not part of the revenue but self consumed is some somehow out of the scope so um, this value of production uh, concept is all encompassing whether you know the the product produced is for market or is for self consumption Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, I agree with Jakub that uh, uh, we we shouldn't be proposing uh, you know new surveys for uh, for uh, the indicators. Um, now, from from this perspective, the denominator of the of two three one, which is um, which is on uh, labor productivity, is is the same kind. It relies on the same kind of information that is collected for the for the numerator. For the numerator of SDG 241 under the land productivity sub indicator. So, there we are concerned with the value of output produced by the agriculture holding in a given year. And, and the denominator is, is, is agriculture land area. In this case, again, I mean, the numerator is the value of output generated by the agriculture holdings, and the denominator is, uh, is, is labor, right? So, from this perspective, I mean, once the information for 241 is collected using uh, this uh, dedicated server, which uh, the um, BBS is planning on, which we have discussed thoroughly in, in our part of the present uh, you know, training, mm -hmm. um, then perhaps that the same information can be utilized to inform the numerator of, uh, of 231 as well. So this is, this, is, uh, this is the point that I wanted to get across. Yeah, okay, participants and uh, Cameroon, you know our colleague uh, Arbab? Who he was, is, he, was uh, he conducted the training for, on coupon for one. Exactly. Ar so Arbab, you know, you know, you know, welcome, welcome, Arbab. Yeah, Thank so you for exactly. your, you know. Exactly. May I add something here, you know? Uh, as Arbab okay. and you know, Yakub just you know, mentioned something yes. here. Yes. Uh, say, for example, you know, uh, as I was involved with you know, BBS, uh, for two years in MS project, you know, as the national consultant, we have, you know, uh, gone through all of the, you know, possible surveys, available surveys, their methodologies. And, you know, one thing is the problem with your equation. So we have supplementary information from other surveys, but your equation suggests that for single household level, we need to have information for all. So even if we have in information in other survey, we cannot, you know, fix one, uh, uh, one common household. For that, we can array all of the information. That will be a problem. It is not that national level figure you, you, you calculate and then you uh, divide something with someone else. It is not that. It is it, you have to you have to array all of the information against all the households. So how can you ensure that households will be common in different surveys? Because different surveys have their own purposes. Some you may find some some you know, commonality, but that won't represent the entire country. And this is one. And another point was uh, raised by Yakub. Uh, cost of production, uh, you know, in, sorry, in the uh, crop cutting method, uh, it is not for all the crops, mainly some major crops and, and mostly other for others, it is it is face-to-face -face interview. And again, the government of Bangladesh, they report yield on the basis of the crop cutting, where is crop cutting, where crop cutting is available. Otherwise, they base, base on or rely on the face-to-face -face interview. These are two, two informations I thought before we further, you know, you know proceed with the discussion, uh, you, you, you need to know. So the whole idea of you know integrating different surveys, uh, I think we need your assistance or suggestion how to incorporate the, uh, the point I, I have just raised. Uh, otherwise, the, we have we, we have several surveys. If you can give some you know, clear cut idea how to incorporate those variables from different surveys, then BBS can try. Otherwise, I don't find any amicable solution right at this point. But in here, we can discuss it further. Thank you from my side now. Thank you very much. I think tomorrow also we'll have the opportunity to have a more discussion on this very, very, very important issues because uh, tomorrow really we'll be discussing the sources of the data. We'll look at the, the surveys conducted by BBS. 
and to what extent uh, those surveys could be amended in order to include uh, variables uh, of interest for computing these indicators. Of course, uh, I think, as it was said, it, is, it would be more cost-effective if the ongoing surveys could be amended in order to include variables. Because one of the very challenging requirements of this indicator set is that all the variables should be coming from a single survey so that you can aggregate everything at holding level. Now, we have uh, two international initiatives, or maybe three. One is the LSMS ISA. Some countries are doing that, and this is providing some useful information. We have the AGRIS, FAO AGRIS. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll talk more about that. And there is this new initiative, the 50 by 30, that is coming on. All these are uh, possibilities of assisting the countries in order to expand their ongoing surveys to include the, the variables that are required for the computation of the indicators. So I, I hope that tomorrow we'll have uh, really, particularly with the presentation of the BBS surveys to see concretely what are the variables included, what are the variables that are missing, to what extent we can try to include some of the relevant variables into the surveys. Regarding the source of the production information, yes, I, I remember that uh, exactly the two methods are used, the major crops, if I understand, are using the crop cutting. And the minor crops are using farmers' declaration. So the official uh, production information is based on these two uh, sources of information. Now, the challenge is when, the, for the major crops, when you use crop cutting to know exactly how the methodology is working and how the aggregation is done, and is, if there is any possibility to derive the holding level production uh, using the crop cutting. Uh, regarding the revenue, this brings me to the uh, one observation I wanted to make at the end of this presentation. In, in, in FAO, within FAO, the methodological note is undergoing a, a revision, actually. So we are in the middle of the revision. So all the questions that you will raise here We'll take them and see also uh, how we can improve the methodological note, taking into account uh, those observations, including what uh, Arbab just said about the revenue. So shall we replace uh, the term revenue by other things? If it makes it more clear, maybe that could be something to consider. But uh, even for the, the factor productivity regarding the, the labor with all the difficulties with the labor, uh, discussions are going on on that. Uh, is there any sim simpler way of uh, computing the, the, the productivity? But no decision has been made. So, so, for, so far, we are using the labor productivity and uh, assisting countries to include the labor variable in their surveys. Now, uh, also, we are discussing the way of uh, the proper way of uh, in including the, the, the sampling weight in the formulas. So we have shown one example here that uh, will demonstrate. But to, just to say that uh, we are uh, in the phase of revising the methodological note and finalizing it. It will not be uh, major changes, but some small changes may happen in the methodological note. So for the moment, I think that's uh, what I have to say. Uh, regarding the Amrul's comments about the male and female, since we are, uh, what do you think? Because here we are concerned with the amount. So we are uh, considering the number of days worked by the, a worker, be it a male or a female. So do you think we, we should uh, discriminate between these two? Uh, now, regarding the asking the farmer the cost of production, uh, yes, if this can be done for each survey, that would be very good, of course. That would be much more actual. But uh, uh, even a simple cost of production in some countries, they don't have that. That's uh, the problem. 
but I know that in Bangladesh, uh, even if it is not so frequent, but at least data on cost of production is available. So if we can improve by asking the farmer uh, for each survey his cost of production, that would be much better, of course. So I stop there. I don't know if we are still in the time, uh, Faridun, or if we have exceeded the time. I don't know. Or if Maybe we, no, we, we have Kat, Katum raising his uh, the hand. Maybe can we give a chance for one more question? I don't know. OK. Uh, uh, been, uh, more questions? Been. Katum? Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks uh, for the <coughs> The the possible process for SDG uh, 2 c one and uh, 2 c two, uh, I think there are only two services uh, at present in India. One is household income and expenditure service, and another one is agriculture sample center. Um, our regular activities only covers the production of uh, selective crops only. There is no livestock information. Also, there is no uh, forestry and fisheries information. And also, the crop information, we don't have the household level information. We uh, just um, have two procedures. Uh, one is for the um, a calculation of yield. That is our, we have some select, selective clusters where crop is uh, Passes for only for the six crops. Other crops, we only use the uh, uh, farmers' interview. Uh, and so we don't have household level information. Also, we don't have how much they sold, how much they store, and um, the other relevant uh, parts. So only from production, we cannot uh, measure 2.2.1 and 2.3.2. And for ATAEs data, uh, ATAEs data, they don't have the uh, labor uh, work that is uh, hourly going to a number of labor days. So this is accepted. And another problem is uh, we have cost of production surveys. Uh, but that is not a regular basis, and that is not for all the crops. So we have selective uh, cost of production survey and also uh, selective crops. So there are um, difficulties in this aspect. So for the agriculture sample census may be the uh, good source of uh, 2.2.1 and 2.2.2. So we are looking for that. And another observation is for uh, Mr. Arbus, uh, he mentioned about the land productivity. But here we see it is, it is labor productivity. So land productivity and labor productivity, I think there are some uh, difference. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank, thank you. Uh, I think, uh, as I said, probably to, tomorrow we'll uh, try to have a more detailed discussion on the data availability and how we can work together in order to, to introduce at least a minimum set of variables in the ongoing surveys. So, because we know that if you introduce more variables, it has a cost. So, but can we see how with the ongoing surveys, we can uh, modify slightly some of the things or the way questions are asked in order to get, to orient, to, to, to make it more uh, SDG friendly in a way. And examples are in the agris because there are some uh, some questions, questionnaires, and uh, etc. developed by Agis, we can see to what extent some of these ideas could be introduced in the ongoing surveys in order to make the surveys more 
uh, SDG friendly, particularly 231 and 232, and maybe over, over indicators. So I don't, are there other questions or shall we move to the next? Please check the chat. There is two more questions. Okay. Can someone check for me because- Yeah. <laughs> so it's- uh, Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's more a consideration than, than a question. So uh, Amirul was mentioning the problem of uh, finding, you know, a, a unique something weight when you combine different sources to, to compute an indicator. Uh, and also he mentioned that the, the sampling should be modified to uh, cover crop, livestock, fishery, and forestry. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. perhaps, yeah, they have yeah. data sources that cover only one sector. Yeah, I think that's probably a very good, uh, particularly the second question, certainly, uh, depending on the, how uh, these activities are distributed within the population, you, you may need to revise your, uh, your sampling design in order to ensure that you are, they are well represented in the sample. So certainly. Now, uh, the first question to combine uh, data from different sources, ideally it should be all variables coming from an integrated survey. Of course, you have, uh, you know, link survey, there is a whole literature on the linkage, record linkage, etc. But this is very, very, very complicated. Uh, some countries are more advanced in that than others, but uh, it requires uh, a lot of technical work to try to link the, the, the different surveys and to get uh, them integrated in one and to, 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 to analyze the variables. So what is advised is the approach of integrated surveys, meaning that in one survey, you try to collect most of the data that you need. Uh, this is a, the same type as the LSMS, as the AGRIS, and uh, maybe some countries also are doing a different uh, type of integrated surveys. But so you go to the farmer, you ask all the questions that you need in order to do your computation, basically to simplify the, the, the approach. So of course, it has also some constraint because the questionnaire may be too big, et cetera, et cetera. That's why the approach in the, in the agris is going by rounds. So you are not collecting everything at once, but uh, you, you, there is a rotation in the, in the modules. So you go, it's a modular approach. But I think I don't need to expand on this now. Uh, maybe tomorrow we can talk more about those things. Okay, any so, other question? No, man, if I can add something on, on what you were saying about record linkage and other methods about integrating data. Like one of the, the, the difficulty there is, is that uh, they, they need to be planned uh, at the design stage. So when, when serve, the, the single surveys are designed, uh, if, if then they need to be integrated, this should be planned. So when, when you design the sample and like you, you should, I don't know, perhaps use similar sampling frames or uh, sampling frames that are connected. So perhaps after like getting into the details of your data sources, we, we may be able to say, more on 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 what can be integrated and and how yeah and you need a, a, a single identifier yeah. for all the, all the yeah. so yeah okay any other question or we have uh, finished all the questions we can move to the next session Kamrul, can we move the next to the next question? Yeah, there is no other question. But probably okay. main concern are already raised, you know, uh, among, from our discussion. So if there is any tomorrow, that may be raised. No problem, just to proceed with the next presentation. Okay, you can start thinking of, uh, well, we have talked about many problems. Tomorrow, we hope we will talk also about uh, possible solutions. So <laughs> think of the solutions tomorrow. So we come okay. up with some uh, plan of action. Uh, what FAO could do in order to help Bangladesh to, to, to integrate some of these variables in order to, to be able to facilitate the calculation of the indicators. 
now we we move to the next session and uh, this is very important also as yesterday you have seen you know uh, the the computation themselves are uh, easy but the problem is uh, with the data first of all how you manipulate the data how you put them in the proper format and then once they are in the proper format calculation is not complicated so today uh, we'll see from the presentations uh, from an example a concrete example how you go from the questionnaires the plot data etc how you combine them up to getting at the point where you get this nice table that uh, Ida showed yesterday and then from that how do you compute the indicator themselves so this session will be led by Jacob and uh, our two colleagues, uh, Max and Audrey, will uh, present uh, uh, the computation that they have done and they, they will demonstrate how it works. Jacob, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Naman. Uh, very briefly, like as, as, as it has been said, you know, this uh, computation of these SDG indicators, in my opinion, can be subdivided into three, three stages. One is having the data sets, you know, having surveys, you know, which can really generate, you know, the, the, the variables that are required. That's one thing. Second is organizing the data so that it will be easier to go straight to computation. The third one is just apply uh, the formulas and compute the, the indicators. So the, the most of the discussions that we had this morning were focusing on the first part, like can we have you know the the the, the, the survey the, the data itself, you know, which type of surveys, how can we integrate uh, use integrated approach to make sure that all the variables that are required for this type of uh, for this indicator the computation are available. That's one thing we are going to discuss in more details in the Bangladesh context tomorrow. But the important thing which I wanted to, 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 to inform you is Bangladesh is not exceptional. May, I mean, the, the reporting level for 231232 is really, really very low because of the, all the issues that we have been discussing this morning. I'm, I'm not getting all the, the required data. You know, in terms of, you know, the, the, the variables, it looks like simple, like, you know, it's volume of production, prices, then labor, you know, most mostly these are the, the, the variables, but, you know, under each component, it is, it's, a, it's more detailed. How do you get the, 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 the production? How do you get the price? How do you get the, the number of uh, working days in, 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 in different, you know, uh, production units in crop, livestock, fishers? These are the challenging things. Therefore, how can we really make sure that we can really be able to generate this data we will discuss it tomorrow based on your uh, your your system that's one thing second thing is okay we have the data. we have we, we conducted this as a survey and it, when, when, uh, we are promoting this type of data should be collected through farm level surveys okay so we we, we once you have this farm level uh, surveys how can you just bring this data into the format that ida was showing yesterday that's what we are going to, 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 to see this, this morning, so that we will be able to compute the indicator using the formulas that Naman was, uh, was showing. Therefore, Max will really go, will take an example of Cape Verde data. We, we, for the demonstration purpose, we took uh, data, I mean, micro level data, farm level data from, uh, from Cape Verde. Therefore, he will walk us through all the steps until we get the structured data sets which will be uh, used to compute the indicators by applying the formula. Then ODL will take that output from Max and apply the show us you know, in an Excel again to how to compute these two indicators in a very uh, simple way. These are the, the, the things that we are going to do. Once they finish those things, I mean, here at FAO, we try to develop an app, a, a, an application, which is going to be a very simple thing. Once we really structure the data, as Max is going to show us, there is a small application that we can demonstrate. It is not like you know, officially launched, but it is it is a potential uh, utility. We'll uh, demonstrate, or we, we can quickly show that that application as well at the end of the, uh, this session. Therefore, it is more practical. So I will leave the floor to Max to start, you know, the discussing the sample data, uh, the, the, the whole procedure using sample data from Cape Verde. Max, you have the floor. Uh, sorry, yeah. Faridun, where are we with the time? Uh, we should be on the break now, but uh, yeah, 
Okay, I let's take uh, uh, 10, 15 minutes for the presentation of Max and then, and we, then we break. break. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I won't take long. It's uh, about 10, 10, 15 minutes. So my presentation will cover the steps from survey to a organized structured data set. To calculate the indicators, we mainly need four uh, parts of uh, data, the revenue, the input of labor and the land and the cost and the sampling weight. Unfortunately here, I cannot show the cost because uh, the cost of data is not available in Cape Word. So I started with here showing the revenue it's uh, straightforward. We collect all the output from each plot owned by the uh, household times the price, sum of them up, and then convert, convert the revenue in local currencies uh, into PPP dollars. The link uh, here will take you to the World Bank PPP conversion factor. The cap word, they structured the questionnaire in this way. So first you ask the household how many plots you have. Let's say here they have three plots. Then you ask details of each plot. So for plot one, what is the plot size? What's the main crop? And then you ask them the production. What is the quantity sold? What is the price sold? What is the quantity for self consumption and for other purpose? Finally, we collect the unit of production because some of them measure the output by uh, weight. Some of them uh, measure the output by volume. We need to convert all the volume uh, into liters and all the weight into kilogram. Once we've done that, the collected data set on production would be like this. So we have the ID column, which is the household ID. The plot ID will identify for one household which plot is the data coming from. Then the plot size, which will all be converted into hectares. Then the crop. So for the household number one, on their first plot, which is two hectares, they produced 120 kilograms of corn, out of which 20, uh, out of which 50 kilograms are sold at uh, two and then the the other 50 is for self-consumption with the last 20 for other purpose so that's um, the clean data set for production uh, as for price some of them will report price but some of them they they they, they because they didn't sell any uh, of their output. So price is not available. In this case, the price is taken from the FL stat producer prices with the link showing on the slide. So here is the price is organized in this way. We have the crop ID, which is important because we need this crop ID to link price with the output. Then we have the crop name, the price if it's measured in kilogram or the price if it's measured in volume. Sometimes uh, in very rare situations, they measure the same output, let's say corn. Some of the households that measure the output in kilograms, some of them measure it in liters. So then we needed to have a, a conversion. So the same price can be in, in, uh, expressed in both weight and volume. After that, it's the section for labor input. The labor is divided by types first. So we have temporary workers and a household members. Also, Cape Verde includes teenagers. And after that, we know the labor type. When they ask them the labor activities, which is divided into four main categories. The first one is la uh, 
land preparation. Next one is sowing, weeding, and harvest. And then for each main activities, there are specific activities. For example, land preparations, uh, the labor input on clearing the land, applying the manure, transportation, all that labor input is recorded. Fi the final labor input would be the total labor days in all these activities and all labor types summed together. So this would be the survey. We ask the household what is the activity if they identify the main activity as preparing the land, we ask them how many people are involved in these uh, activities. And then they report the average hours of each worker. So we can time the number of people with the average hour of each worker to get the number of hours of input. Uh, of course, we also know the labor type and the specific activities. So once we uh, get all that organized, the labor input can be organized into a table like this one showing on the slide. We have the household ID, plot ID, so we know all the labor input is on which uh, plot of land. And then we record the lab, uh, labor type, what's the specific activities, how many people are involved in these activities, and what is the average hour for each person. We can time the last two columns to get to the labor hours, and then convert the labor hours into labor days by assuming that one labor day equals eight hours. And then for land area, it's pretty straightforward. The main thing to keep in mind is we need to exclude uh, land rented to others, but uh, add the land rented from others. So in this case, for this example, we have uh, this household, their own plot one and a plot two. They rented plot three from others but they rented the plot for out to some, uh, some people. So the total land area is the size of plot one plus two plus three, uh, and then convert that uh, size into hectares. Then for the uh, collected data, it would be organized into this table with the ID, the plot ID, and the cultivated area. Sampling weight is straightforward. We have the household ID, and then the sampling weight for each household, which can be organized uh, as a table. After we Organized the uh, after we collect each uh, separated table, then we can aggregate the each specific table into the household label. So, for example, for the revenue, we needed to add all the revenue from all the crops from all the plots of land into one single number and assign that to the household. The same thing applies to the labor input, the, the land, and the cost of data if it's available. So we will have four main tables. For table one, we have the household ID and revenue. For table two, we have the household ID, land area, labor days. For table three, we have the ID and the cost. For, I, uh, for table four, we have the ID and the sampling weight. So for all four tables share the same ID, which is unique to each household. Then we can join these four tables together to form the final 
clean data set. Each row will be one household, and the main columns would be the revenue, cost, land area, labor, and the sampling weight. After we organize the data set in this way, then we can go to the next step to uh, identify which household is, uh, is considered as a smallholder, and then calculate uh, the two indicators. Uh, it's that's the end of uh, my presentation. Okay, uh, Jacob. Uh, okay, this is uh, you know the, the the end of the presentation as Max was saying, but he will have some more details on explaining the codes to in producing each of the tables that he explained and the codes the code that he, he was uh, using to, to come up to generate these tables and gives you the final data sets uh, in an excel file after following all the all the, the, the steps and that time can do that one after uh, the, the the break maybe okay so yeah Sorry, we have a question in the chat. I don't yeah, know if yeah. we want to address it now or later. Is uh, how to con uh, compute, consider land size for uh, shared cropping? So maybe, okay. yeah. I guess uh, th this shared cropping is uh, referring to mixed cropping. And uh, so you have several crops in the same plots. No, there are two 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 things. Uh, I think the, the uh, one is a mixed uh, mixed crops, as you said, but that one can easily be calculated by computing the percentage. I think this question is like shared cropping because we, you have one plot, yeah. and then that plot is being used for shared cropping. Like two households may may use that particular plot for a kind of shared cropping. They they share the the output at the end of the day. Okay. That, that's that's you. Can you yeah. specify your question, please? I don't know who else. Yeah, it was my question, you know, uh, Naman. Say, yeah. for example, a, a piece of land, you know, as you know, Yakub was telling, a piece mm -hmm. of land uh, is, you know, uh, cultivated from investment from two to person. Yeah. So kind of rent in type of uh, situation. Ah, so okay. this okay. same piece of land okay. may be considered in two, two, two households. Will you split into half or I don't know, uh, there should be one mechanism. I suppose there is a way of uh, dividing the production between the two, no? in this case yeah yeah sure it says 70 30. so yeah. we so, can uh, we yeah. can you know consider 70 percent of the land in one household yeah, the proportion. proportion we can take the proportion yeah, exactly. Yeah? Exactly. just to raise the raise the issue so that we yeah, don't yeah. miss the without anything yeah, yeah. sure sure okay. yeah uh, they, i mean uh, uh, if it is, I mean, if it's managed by two percent, seventy thirty, we we'd use that proportion to to, to come up to, to calculate the revenue for yeah, this yeah. particular household. If, as Naman was saying, if that particular crop has two crops, mixed crops, and I mean, like maize and uh, barley, for instance, and if maize is twenty percent and barley is eighty percent, we just calculate that percentage for each particular crop when we multiply by the cost and the production. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is also one option. Yeah. Good. Okay, so let's take a 15 minutes break. And uh, Faridun, at what time should we be back? Uh, ideally, we should come back at uh, 11.50, but we can come back at 11.55 if you announce 15 minutes break. This is the time in the room. That's 4.55 in Bangladesh. 4.55 in Bangladesh. Uh, 15. Uh, 15, uh, 50, 15, 55, 355. Yeah, yeah, 355 in Bangladesh. Okay, thanks. Hey, and, and as there are a few hand raised, or there were, maybe after the break, we can address other, other questions. So there was uh, Mr. Taidul Islam that has, has a question. So perhaps when we come back, we can. Before going back to presentations, we can give some space. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Audrey, okay. in the meantime, participants from Bangladesh, you know, please join us at three fifty-five. Please don't go out from the uh, webinar. Just uh, being yeah, yeah. here, and you can have a rest. Uh, yeah, we will yeah. stay connected. Yeah, maybe Naman, you raise. Before go to the maybe. next presentation, I have a question uh, uh, to Max. Uh, Max uh, <coughs> mentioned. In a slide number seven, 
lands a labor activities included. He mentioned here land preparation, sewing, wedding, and harvesting. And in the perspective of Bangladesh, uh, there, uh, there is two gaps. One is uh, seed bed preparation, and there is tracing and cleaning of crops the, and, and irrigation also. The, this uh, activity involved in uh, labor. So it is uh, it is uh, it is uh, depend on cost of production, on uh, seed uh, bed preparation, uh, tracing and cleaning and irrigation. Maybe it is included here for uh, for calculating the cost of production. Irrigation and what what is the second activity? Irrigation and seed bed preparation. Our holder has, uh, they have two types. One is processing plants and another is the uh, planting the uh, yeah, seed. Uh, for, yeah, uh, 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 and another is tracing the crops and cleaning. And another is irrigation. Irrigation needs a leap labor. Okay. Maybe you know, uh, let me clarify. You know, he indicated that you know in Bangladeshi agriculture, uh, as indicated by Max, uh, that there are three or four you know activities during the field activities. Mm -hmm. But in, but in in Bangladesh there will be more three three categories of you know labor labor in, in uh, inclusion actually in labor India, engagement. India, India. So in the questionnaire there may be three more variables and in the calculation we can add those. Yeah, you, you need to include all the costs. So everything, even if uh, I think the Kabbad example is maybe a simplified one. Uh, in Bangladesh there may be one more. One example. One example farmer. Uh, processing the seed and they uh, they uh, prepare the plant and they need a they need a seed bed preparation. The seed bed preparation need a labor, and another is after harvesting they uh, need a labor for tracing and cleaning the crops, and uh, standing crops they need a labor for irrigation. Yeah, I think you should count all the labor work for the activity. Yes. Okay. Shall we continue now? Uh, one, question? one question, Mr. Tawid. Mr. Tawid, you wanted to ask a question. Mr. Tawid, please. Mr. Tawid, can you raise your hand? So that yeah, 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 yeah. Raise can, your hand. Can you okay. hear me? Now you're yeah. okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah you yes. can hear me. Uh, my question is, in the case of joint landowner, in that case, what will be the weight and what will be the number of size? That means N. Is there any chance? Uh, so uh, can you explain in the case, better? Uh, in the case of joint landowner, okay. landowner is joint. In that yes. case, is there any change uh, in the weight or uh, and in the size of uh, in the size of uh, n number of uh, denominator? What will be the denominator? Denominator yes, will be know, you know you know if you don't get the point, let me just you know reiterate it again. Say in Bangladesh there are so many cases that one piece of land is owned by two persons. So okay. and then similarly like share crop, that piece of land is used for cultivation. Mm -hmm. Then how to incorporate these, you know, land size in the equation? Okay, so it's a kind of a, it's a, it's a one holding with a two, two, let's say two, two owners. Two, persons. two owners. Two, two owners, because the, the the definition of the holding is like an enterprise. So it's a, the holding is considered as a unit. If they don't have other activities aside of, if they, they are only doing this one plot activity, but if they are doing over, if you go back to the definition of the holding, you know, in the FL publication on agriculture census, for example, you will find the definition there. And if a holder A and holder B have uh, separate activities, agriculture activities, and only they are working on one land as a 
but they have over land or over livestock, etc. So in this case, probably there are two holdings, but you need to find a way of uh, dividing the, the, the activity on the, the plot. Now, if they are only like a cooperative or uh, like a joint, uh, people are, are only doing this activity on the plot, this normally should be considered as uh, one holding. I don't know if it is clear enough or, uh, but those is it, cases is it, is it clear? I, I, I think it's clear. Uh, Naman, you explained it very, yeah. very, very well. Is it like, you know, yeah. what, is, what is the purpose of that? Is it a, if it is an enterprise type of thing, it's just one. If it is like, you know, both are, you know, earning their living from this piece of land, then they, this, this is going to be counted as, as two. I can send you okay. the link okay. to the publication of FAO on the concept. So yeah. you will find there are discussions on this uh, same issue in that publication of the agriculture census. You know, you have different types of holdings. And, uh, but the, the key point is agriculture activity, not mm -hmm. uh, selling products and things like that, but uh, involved in agriculture activity, uh, crop activity or livestock, etc. So this is, uh, if they are combined and doing that together, like an enterprise, that should be one holding. Now, okay. if they have separate activities, it should be two holdings in that two case. Buildings. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Okay. 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 So, Max, can we continue? Yeah. So, before I start, can we have a show of hands? So, um, I, ha I can have an idea of how many R users are in the participants. If you are an R user uh, or have some experience with the R language, can you please raise your hand? Is it possible to count the hands raised? Uh, I yes, but for the moment there are no hand raised. So no, I'm sure there are people in BBS who knows very well uh, R. Uh, Kamrul, you, your people, I think there are certainly uh, data people, uh, IT people who knows uh, R, no? Hello? Kamrul. Hello, hello. Yes, maybe Max, you repeat the question. Can, can you repeat the question? Yeah, before before start, I just want to have an idea of uh, how many participants are familiar with the R language. So I can uh, decide with how, how deep I go into the details of the R code. So far, I know most of them are used to Stata, but R, there are some, you know, not all. Not all, but okay. you can you can uh, you can go uh, logically so that uh, whenever they use R, so that they can follow. Okay. But I, I so, allow allow ample number of questions so when they when just find any problem. Okay, I will uh, focus more on the logic behind the code. So this yeah, because then if, if they understand the logic, they, they can also replicate it in that as well. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. this document uh, contains all the steps from the survey data sets uh, and all the steps, clean the data set, organize the data set. The output is the clean data set as um, I just presented in the last slide. So first step is I loaded the packages that I will be needed for the uh, clearing the data set. And then I begin uh, organize the revenue data set. So the Cape Word data set for the revenue is saved in this file. The first step, I replaced all the NAs. Some of the NA is represented by negative 99999. Some of them are represented by uh, this symbol. So I replaced all that 
by NA. And then I identified the, the cultivated land area, which is uh, this variable S2 area. Um, but the unit is in square meters. So I divided the land area by 10,000 to convert all the land areas into uh, hectares. The next step I did is to convert all the units. So some of them, they measure the weight by grams. Some of them measure them by 25 kilograms bags. Some of them are in 50 kilograms bags. So I converted all that uh, unit into kilograms. If it's measured in lit liters, I also did the same conversion. So after these steps, I will have the output measured in kilograms or liters, just these two units. So then after that, I combine the data set together. Cause in the main data set, uh, all of the crops are identified. In the last uh, tab, they ask, do you have other crops? And that is saved in a different data set. I call it the other. So I combine the main data set with the common crops with the other data set, which have some rarely grow crops. Uh, in this case, it's tomato in Cape Verde. So I combine the data set together with, with, and with the full join function. Then I calculated the revenue. So in this case, the crop revenue equals to the output if it's measured in kilograms times the price in kilograms plus the uh, output measured in volume in liters times the price in liters. And then I sum it all up. So group, group the revenue by the household ID, the parcel or plot ID, and then crop ID. And then I sum, summarize the crop revenue divided the total revenue by the PPT, PPP factors to com convert all the revenue into uh, PPP dollars. And then the last step here, I group all the revenue by their household ID and then summarize the, the uh, crop revenue. So all the crop revenue within that household is summarized into one single number. The output is this table. I have the household ID, and then I have the revenue uh, for the entire household. In, in this case here, you, have, you can see there are some zero revenues for the entire household. It's because in this uh, specific year, it's a very dry year. Um, and a lot of the households, they, they simply don't have any revenue. Next step is the code to uh, uh, clean the labor input. So mainly the labor input is saved in four parts as, we, as I uh, presented. So the labor used for preparing the land the labor used for sowing, weeding, and harvest. Again, the first step is uh, replacing the missing uh, values by NA. And then the, to calculate the total hours for uh, each specific activities here, to calculate the total hours for preparing the land, it is the product of the this variable which is uh, the total number of uh, workers and then the second variable is the average hour spent by each worker 
So the product will tell me the total hours on preparing the land for a specific uh, plot of land. I did the same thing for sow, sowing, weeding, and harvest. And then I summarized each activities by the household ID. So the sow data set here is the total hours spent on sowing for the entire household. The same thing applied to weeding, harvest, and then I joined the data set, the, all the hours spent on preparing the land, sowing, weeding, harvest, I joined them together. And then I have the total hours of all activities, which is the sum of total hours on preparing the land, sowing, weeding, harvest, with the NA variables removed. So then the labor hour hold this data set contains the household level labor input. And then the steps here is adding uh, variable labels. The important part is here, I divided all the total hours by eight. So the hours are converted into labor days by assuming one labor days equals to eight hours. And then I will get the data set for labor days, which is the household ID, and then the labor input measured in days for that household. You can see here for the first household, the labor input for that entire day is only 2.5 uh, days. The reason is that for Cape Word, the land is really limited. So for some households, they, they are only working with um, half or even a quarter hectares. So in this case, the 2.5 days, maybe only uh, a sowing. And then after that, they have a very dry year. So there, then there's no additional labor input. After that, I uh, start um, work on the land input. So read the land data, replace all the missing uh, data with NA. And then I summarized to make sure that for each household, which is identified by the ID, and then this ID identifies each, each specific plot. So once I group the data set by the household ID and the plot ID, I should only have one, which, which is in, in this case, uh, two, because I don't want to double count uh, when I calculated the total area. In this case, once I grouped the data set by the household ID, I can just summarize the area of each specific plot. That the total number will be the total land owned by that household or um, cultivated by that household. So here you can see um, the minimum household plot of land owned by the household is one. For some household, they own up to 14 plots. So that's, that's a very big household owning, owning lots of land. And then here, the data set not only have the uh, area, it also have the sampling weight. So I um, added the sampling weight 
which is the last column. And then the cultivated area for that household is the, the summation of the size of each specific plot owned by the household. So in this case, for the first uh, household, they own 0.5 hectares of uh, land. And also you can see here, a lot of uh, the, uh, the household, they have less than one hectare of land. So up to this point, we have the data set on revenue, the data set on uh, labor input, and then the data set on uh, uh, areas. Then the next step would be join the data set because all the data set that share the same ID, household ID, I can join the data set by the household ID. Before, before doing that, I added another column, which is the, the county where the household is located in. This step can be skipped if you don't want to uh, group the indicators <laughs> by uh, counties. So here is a summary of the data set. The first column, I have the household ID, the county code uh, specifying where the household is uh, located. And then the revenue of the household with the minimum household that have zero revenue. And then the maximum household with uh, $10,000 uh, uh, of uh, revenue. The labor days minimum input is zero, which uh, I will filter in the next step. And then the maximum uh, labor day input is 82 days. The cultivated uh, uh, area minimum is zero, which also needs to be filtered in the next step. And then the maximum is 4.9 hectares. So here, the last step, I filtered to only keep the complete cases. And then I filtered to make sure all the labor days is greater than zero. Cause to plant anything, you have to have a positive uh, input on labors. And then the cultivated area for the entire household need to be greater than zero. After that filter that will give me the final clean data set, which is presented here. You have the household ID, the first column, the county where that household is located in, the revenue for that entire household, and labor days, cultivated land area. The last column is sampling weight. So in this case, for Cape Word, we have 883 uh, unique household. And then once we get the data into the form like the, this last table, the next step would be easy. Um, Jakob, do I present the app now or later? Maybe later. Later. Okay. Later. So then that's the end of uh, my presentation showing how I take the survey data set, clean them, organize them to the clean format. And uh, this data set will be ready for the next step to identify smallholders and calculate all the indicators. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there are very burning questions now, or if we leave uh, Audrey to present the second part with the data. Kamrul? Uh, actually, uh, you know, I will seek you know, any kind of suggestion or question from BBS control part, because you know, they are the you know, uh, people who will you know, finally uh, calculate this indicator. So if anything, you know, confusion is there for the timing, they can raise question. But I understand uh, most of them are very equipped with you know this kind of works. 
especially in stata but in our course are very much similar to uh, you know okay so stata. maybe let's That's go let's do the let's go to the next one and yeah. uh, at the I end we can we can raise uh, this issue okay so yeah yeah okay uh, so i will present the practical exercise we using excel file i'm going to share my screen Okay, can you see the Excel file? Yeah. Make it a little yeah. bit bigger, you know, the font size. Yeah, that will be fine, yeah. Okay. Okay, the, so... The, the output uh, coming from the process described by Max. Okay. Yeah. Yes, as you can see here, we have uh, we have four columns. The first one is uh, for the measurement of the land, labor, the second one, cost of production, the third one, and the sampling weight, the last one. So uh, this data is coming from Cape Verde. Uh, the cost of production was uh, just generated by Max for the exercise purpose. But over data are real data from Cape Verde. So the first thing uh, when you, you, we have uh, this data is to identify the small scale food production for the target 2.3. So for the two indicator, 2.31 and 2.32. So as you can see here, we have a, an Excel sheet here named threshold for identification. So the first step is to identify small scale production. Uh, we, for Cap Verde, we have just uh, data for, for land and for, for revenue. We don't have livestock. If you remember uh, on the, present, the past presentation, we have for identification three variable, revenue, uh, land and, and livestock. But for this example, we don't have livestock. So we will uh, do the identification using only uh, revenue and land. So um, the first thing is to, to identify the threshold for, for land. Here you can see I can make it bigger. We have uh, the land size for each household year. Uh, we need to compute the cumulative distribution of land. The first thing is to order this um, the household uh, decreasing land size. So we can select the, the data file. And sort. Using the variable end from the smallest to the largest. So it is OK. And then you can compute the cumulative distribution of the land. So I will do it right now and then this plus this and I complete the formula until the end. And here the maximum value of the cumulative distribution equal to the last digit here. And I can compute uh, 0 0.40 times the maximum value of the accumulated value. So I have 14.71. So you have to, to look for the, the value of a land that corresponds to this 
you can see here we have uh, 0 0.9. So for length, we have, I can put it in yellow to remember we have 0 0.9 here. So if I go back to the data file, you can see here, I can put the, 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 the result here. I go back here and select, and I have the first value of the threshold for length size. So I go back to the, the threshold sheet and we will uh, determine the threshold for the revenue. It is the same process. We have to order from the smallest to the largest and complete the community distribution. So um, you can just show the results here. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, already the result here. It is uh, here in yellow. So I will do it quickly. Okay, so it is automatically computed here. So I will uh, select the research here as well. Okay, so this is okay for the threshold. And here we will uh, compute um, a dichotomic value, one for a small scale, scale production and zero for overs. So I will, you can see the formula here. So we need for the, the land, land is here. Let's or equal to the land size. I think there is a L missing, L for land. What? If it is land, no? Yes. No, and it so is the formula. It is a function end to, to have a, a junction of yeah, yeah. a mini, it is a function, Excel function, it is not the name. Okay. Okay. And the second one, it is the revenue year. Uh, I, you see here the, the cell L3, you need to, to fix it because it is the same pressure for all the households. So I use a, a function with this dollar at the left and, and at the, the right. And I go for the revenue less or equal to the threshold here. It is the same, I need to fix this value. And when we have one for small and zero for overs. So I need to have the formula. So we can see we have 27 small holders on this data file. So um, the next column is the, the computation for, for the, the numerator. You, if you remember the, the formula for 231, uh, in the case we have uh, sampling weight applied, we need to, to multiply the weight by the, the, the revenue divided by the labor per day. So this is the first column for the, the first indicator 231. In order to compute the 232, we need to, to have the revenue minus the cost of production because we don't have um, stock variation here. So we have just revenue minus the cost of production. 
as we have simply when we have to multiply by the weight. So it is a simple formula. So we can compute here. So the sample weight multiplied by the revenue divided by the label. So I can apply the formula. And for the last colon, we have a sample weight multiplied by the revenue minus the cost of production. So I can apply the formula. Here we have the total. You can see here the total. And here as well the total. We have the total of the sample weight. It is the, the total, the size of the population. So it is the denominator of the in the both formulas. So for the first indicator, we have just to divide this total by the total of uh, sample weight. And for the second indicator, two, three, two, we have to divide this total by total of the population. But um, the next step is to filter and to get uh, all small orders and to filter again to get uh, over order, no small order. So it is, uh, you have just to go to data and filter. I will keep only a small order here, you can see. So we have 27, as I said. So I have just to copy and pass to the next Excel file. So here we have, we need to compute the total. Yeah, total for the sample weight. And total for this and this. So you can see um, for the SDG231, we have uh, to divide the, the colon H weight uh, times revenue divided by labor by the, the sum divide it by the total of sampling weight. So we have a result for the first indicator. And the second one here, we have a weight uh, multiplied by the, the subtraction revenue by cost, divided by the total of sampling weight. So we have the SDG 232 result for small orders. So I, I can go back here and filter again to take no small order and it is the same process. Copy and paste here and we will get the result. So we have a total here. Tom. Okay, so we have the result here. And here I can put the summary of result just for presentation. So labor productivity for smell order, I go here. And I have a and not small order labor productivity here. And for HGG 232, the same, I go for to small order five. And no small order SDG 232. And that is the result we have for KPD exercise. So we can see here um, 
we have the receipt of HTG231 for both small order and no small order here. And we SDG 222 as well. So that is for the, the, this computation using Excel file. I don't know if you have some question. Okay. Okay. Maybe Max can also talk about uh, the application now. Yeah, Max, can you quickly show us the application and then we summarize? Huh? Sure. Um, I will demonstrate the app. Let me share my screen first. So this, this would be the final data set. I have a little bit more columns here. Uh, this will be illustrating the ideal case. Here we have bigger, bigger, bigger. Sure. So I have the household ID, the land area, a livestock unit, the revenue, the cost, sampling weight, and then the gender of the uh, household head, whether that uh, household is in rural area or uh, urban area. And then the last one is whether uh, it's indigenous or non-indigenous. This, this data is missing. So I have um, put it here to illustrate what happens if we have missing data. Once we prepare the data like this, then it's easy to upload all the data set into this app. Here, it's a R Shiny app to calculate the indicators automatically. I just need to browse the data set and then it's done. So this is the original data set as we just saw it. The next tab will automatically identify the smallholders by the land, the livestock unit and revenue. The third tab calculate the indicators for smallholders, non-smallholders, and then group it by the gender of the household head, the location, and the indigenous status. So here, because um, we have all the missing values, so the indicator is for the entire um, sample. The last tab will automatically calculate the SDG 232, also grouped by smallholders, non-smallholders, and the gender of the uh, household head and the location. So once we organize the data set in a clean format, it's you can upload it into this app and then the app will do the rest of the work. Okay. okay. Jacob, you want to say something before yeah. you can the floor to the yeah. questions? Yeah. I think you know this session was maybe to show you how how we can really practically compute this uh, indicator starting from the micro the raw data from the survey data you know unclean data from uh, Cape Verde. We took I think one district data as a sample and then we just tried to, to produce you know the, the the whole step. Therefore you know uh, ODA shows you know, the Excel computation, but there is a, the app can also produce the same result. But the important thing in my opinion is how to get the data in that straight format, which, you know, uh, Max was really showing the whole logical step by creating about four tables from revenue, land, weight, labor, and merge them together. So that, you know, to, 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 to have, you know, structured data sets. After that, either you apply Excel or, the, or use the, the application that the, the app that has been developed, it will really simplify the, 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 whole, the whole thing. Therefore, as I, as, as I said, the first problem we are going to discuss tomorrow, can we get such a data in Bangladesh context? That's one. The second and the third problems are, I think, resolved. You know, there are the, the, how to organize the data and how to compute the indicators. 
And if there are any any questions, then I think we can leave the floor for discussion. Huh? Yeah, so up to you. Uh, if you have any questions, clarifications, or comments, feel free to raise your hand. I should add that, uh, of course, the case presented for uh, Cabell is very, very simple because, as you have seen, it's only crop. There is no livestock. But we are trying to work with Cabverde in order to, to amend their survey to see if also uh, livestock could be added. That's one. The second is that this is a rain fed crop only, but they do have some uh, irrigated crop also. So we will work with them to see if they can include also that because this makes a big change in the revenue of the, the, the holder. Uh, rain fed is very, very round. Um, if it's not, there's not rain, there is no production. So it may have some irrigated land, may have uh, some livestock, etc. So in order really to not uh, underestimate the revenue of the holding, you need to make some effort to include uh, a minimum set of agricultural activities, not just the crop. And uh, even for the la labor also, for uh, Cap Verde, it's broken down into these uh, four types of, uh, but in Bangladesh, it's much, much more certainly, as uh, someone was saying. There are many of the activities that require labor, so we need to take those into account. Uh, and we need to adapt what has been shown here to adapt to the context of the country. The, this was just presenting the logic on how to, to, to go about it, but it has to be uh, customized and adapted to the specific case of, uh, of the country. I don't know if anybody has any comment or uh, questions at this stage. Uh, uh, Mr. Naman, you know, I think, you know, uh, the way uh, the, the, the you know, slides were presented, the logical sequence is already understood by the participants. And again, uh, uh, certainly this data set is a little bit easier than the uh, complexity that may arise in Bangladesh context. So I think from the you know, presentation, I understand uh, finding the uh, approved information, uh, either from one, one survey or other survey, it is one important one, and cleaning the data to fit into this you know, assigned shape as, as Excel file, that is also you know, kind of cumbersome. But the way it was presented, probably the logical sequence is already understood by the Participants, when they will have their own data, they will find their ways to how to clean this data. Because you know, at the end, we need some uh, assigned columns for this calculation. And as the program is there, you know, uh, very very much you know easy easier. You know, this program is there, so Excel file is there, so we do not need to go for the calculation of the you know, equation. So equation is in built in the system. So once data is ready, BBS will be able to uh, without understanding the internal you know mechanism of the how to write those equations, it will be easier for them to calculate this one. But you know, the main concern is to find appropriate data set uh, covering all the aspects of the indicator. And just in, if that is there, clean the data accordingly. This is my opinion. But I think you know, if any of the participants have any, any opinion or any, any, any question, because uh, they, they, they are the persons, you know, they will at the end calculate this indicator and report uh, to FAO. So I will request anyone, you know, if Mr. You know, uh, Islam or other, you know, they, they are very, you know, actually, actually active, you know, in, in this kind of an exercise. I request to just respond to the next one. Mr. Tahid just raised his hand. You may allow him. Yeah, I understand the logic. It's okay, but it would be good if you. Send us the do file. When if you find, if you send us the stata with the help of a stata, it will be good for us. Okay. Um. Sorry. May May I take this? This. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So uh, as, as we said yesterday, we will share a Stata do file, a template, but the, the template is generic. It's not, uh, you know, you will have to adapt it to your specific case and your yes. specific uh, data. Yeah, yeah, uh, I understand. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we, can, we can share a, a template yeah, yeah. with you. Uh, and then yes, you will have to adapt it to your data. Yeah, it would be okay. good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, as for this application uh, that Max just showed, I think after this meeting, probably we'll have a, a technical meeting within FAO in order to go through the application. And uh, once it is validated by FAO, it can be freely distributed to, to all countries if they want to use it. Uh, so in the next maybe weeks or months, certainly that application also will be uh, available for anybody who wants to use it. Yeah, you know, that, 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 yeah, that is fine. And I think, you know, uh, there is no, no hands raised, but even if there is any, we, we have, you know, tomorrow to just, you know, discuss these issues. Uh, do, do we have anything left in the agenda today? Now, can we just uh, do the same as we did uh, yesterday to see if, since you all have the data now, if you can uh, kind of, uh, as a homework, look at the, uh, go through the process yourself. And tomorrow, as we did today, so tomorrow we can ask if uh, some of you have been able to, to go through the whole process and uh, get the results. And if there is yeah, any yeah. additional questions, and we can uh, respond to that, those questions. No, this is this is a good proposition. I think you know, uh, like today, tomorrow we can also do the same. And I, I know I will request all of the participants to uh, try at, at home. But individually, I, I want to request Mr. Tahidul Islam, as he is found to be very much you know uh, involved in the, you know question and discussion. So I request Mr. Tahid and other colleagues, if possible, at least go you know go through this process and try yourself if you can you know, find any, any appropriate solution. And by doing that, if you find any problem, we can also discuss this on tomorrow. Yeah, this will be very helpful even for us also, because if you find uh, some problems, maybe we can uh, improve the, the, the applications or the way we do the, 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 the calculations. So your input could be also interesting in that way. Yeah, yeah. And by this time, uh, I saw Saleh send to send the PowerPoint to you. You can also, you know, uh, uh, share with you know others, you know, the PowerPoint slide. And if not, uh, Mr. Saddam, uh, if he doesn't have, you know, have not yet, uh, uh, has not yet paid, sent these PowerPoint files, I'll request you know do that one so that you know uh, the organizers have those slides beforehand. So that will ease our sessions. Yeah, that would be very nice. Yes. Uh, so, if there is no more. So, regarding maybe this is some comment, uh, send us this presentation to our email. So, if I do, we ha you have all the presentations for all the sessions. So, that can be shared, right? To all the participants. Maybe. Uh, I don't know exactly which one I need to send. If somebody will give me this, uh, the name of the presentations which I need to send, I will do it, no problems. Uh, okay. okay, okay, we I can discuss that. Yeah. Discuss but that. you know, you, you can share your PowerPoints that you have you know, shared with us, you know, to all, all, all of the participants, methodological issues, and then you have shared the Excel files and other data files, but the PowerPoints if you share for future reference actually. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, I will tell you, uh, Farid, which ones uh, uh, should be sent to all participants after this meeting. Also, please include when, when you send those yeah. documents. Yeah, now I, as you said, it would be nice if we have also the two remaining uh, PowerPoints. But even if we don't have that, we will send already the presentation that we had. Okay. Okay, no more points, uh, no, no communication, Faridun, from you regarding the organization. So we do as we, we do tomorrow as we did today. 
Yeah. Okay, so today, basically, as you have seen, we have gone through the, 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 the calculation of the indicators, which is not really the most challenging, but the most challenging is a data issue. And hopefully tomorrow, we'll have a really good discussion and good proposals on how to overcome the, the, the gaps, data gaps, at least to have a minimum set of data then that can allow to, to compete those two indicators. And uh, as I said, FAO has some uh, initiatives going on. Uh, probably they can work with uh, Bangladesh as they are doing with other countries to help them into uh, getting the ongoing surveys more SDG friendly. Uh, it's better to, to, if possible, to work with the ongoing surveys because there is an infrastructure in place than to try to, to, to invent a new survey and uh, with all the logistics that goes with that. And we have models that uh, the agris, the LSMS and others that certainly we can borrow some ideas from those and including the ongoing surveys. So with that, I think we, we can uh, stop here for today yeah, and I'm resume the, yes, someone want to. No, just I was saying, telling yes, that I was agreeing with you actually. We can stay in our quality day actually. Okay, so we stop the session for today and tomorrow morning we start again at two o'clock Bangladesh time. Thank yes. you to everybody and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.